Adobe just released some very exciting features in the beta version of After Effects, which you can download and test out right now. And we're gonna look at all of them in this video. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can install the beta version of After Effects through the Creative Cloud desktop app. And once you have the beta version up and running, click this button to see an up-to-date list of all of the features currently in beta and their statuses. The beta version gets updated on a nightly basis, so stay on top of that and check the list for anything that's new. And don't be afraid to use the beta version just because it's in beta. You can still install all of your favorite scripts, presets, extensions, and plugins, and they should work just fine. And if you're worried about stability issues, I've never run into any problems working in the beta, and even know of at least one person who works in the beta full time. So if there's a beta feature you'd like to take advantage of, you should really just give it a shot and see what you think. And if you've been looking for a focused path to learning how to make motion graphics in After Effects, check out my course, Launch Into After Effects. It's the most comprehensive intro to After Effects ever, and the course I wish I had when I first started learning. Through the more than 20 hours of structured video lessons, yes, 20 hours, you'll create 10 fun motion design projects, each teaching you a different aspect of the software. And for a limited time, I'm running a sale on my courses, so check the link in the description to take advantage of that. Now, let's take a look at the new features in the After Effects beta. The first and I think most exciting new feature has to do with how After Effects handles rendering frames for playback. This doesn't necessarily speed up render times, but it definitely increases how long your rendered previews can be. Now, historically, After Effects has always loaded all of the rendered preview frames into the RAM, and it's really limited by how much RAM your system has. But now, essentially, After Effects is going to rely less on that RAM and more on hard drive disk cache. To test this out, I loaded up a 10 minute 4K MP4 file in both the beta and current versions of After Effects one at a time. Now, it just so happens that I upgraded my RAM this past Black Friday from 64 gigabytes to 128 gigabytes, which is great for the way that After Effects currently handles previews because all of those previews happen directly in the RAM. But having so much RAM actually makes this test harder for me to do because it would take a lot longer to run out of RAM during a preview. So before running the test, I changed my preferences to leave 96 gigs of RAM reserved for other apps. So After Effects only has 32 gigs of RAM to work with. I started by bringing that clip into the current version of After Effects, added it to a comp, and hit the space bar. After about 30 seconds, the RAM preview was full and that range started looping. I couldn't render any more frames without dropping some of the existing RAM preview, and on top of that, playback wasn't always real time as it was initially running through that clip. Next, I recreated the same test in the beta version of After Effects with the same limitation on the amount of RAM After Effects could use. After I hit the space bar, the clip played back perfectly, in real time, and never stopped. Eventually, those 32 gigs of RAM were completely occupied, but instead of stopping, After Effects transferred those rendered frames on the fly to my disk cache and continued using the 32 gigs of RAM like a rolling buffer of storage. It just worked. So what does all of this really mean? Can we start editing videos in After Effects now? No, I would not recommend that. After Effects is still not a video editor, but it does allow users to not necessarily need massive amounts of RAM anymore. Since After Effects can utilize a local disk cache more efficiently now, the amount of RAM isn't nearly as big of a factor for smooth playback, which has historically always been the case, almost to the point of it being a joke. After Effects will eat up as much RAM as you throw at it faster than you can possibly imagine. So while it is kind of funny that almost immediately after I doubled my RAM, RAM is a lot less important to the After Effects workflow, I still got a great deal and the overall performance of my machine has greatly improved. But, and yes, there is a but, to truly take advantage of this new and improved caching performance, you have to have empty disk space to use as a cache, and After Effects still needs that disk drive to be fast. In addition to upgrading my RAM, I also added a dedicated two terabyte NVMe drive to my machine solely for disk cache. And since I have so much room there, I increased my After Effects cache size to 512 gigabytes. So even though RAM isn't quite as important, I'm still only able to take advantage of this improvement because I have the dedicated disk space for it. I'd highly recommend you test this new feature out for yourself. It's really amazing. It'll be enabled by default in the beta, but you can find the option to disable it in the preferences. If you have any feedback or bug reports on this feature, there's a discussion specifically for that reason in the Adobe community. I'll link to that in the description. I really think this is one of the biggest improvements to After Effects in years. And once it's pushed out to the current version, new users aren't gonna know how good they have it. Next up, the transparency grid is now customizable with three preset grid sizes, as well as color controls. Head into the preferences and then grid and guides to change these settings and customize the way the grid appears when you enable it. This could be really helpful for layers with very similar brightness values to the default transparency grid colors when you need to see that transparency. 
I do kind of wish that this was something I could customize without having to go into the preferences though. The more effort it takes to customize something makes me less likely to actually customize it. If I could right click on the comp to change the grid or access these preferences in a drop down menu, maybe under the transparency grid button, or even in the composition settings, I'd be much more likely to use this feature more often. We can now also customize the background color of the composition, footage, and layer panels, and this is independent of the overall UI brightness. The area outside of the comp, footage, or layer viewer can be set to one of five preset grayscale values or even a custom color. Again, this is useful for comps that have very similar colors to the default background color and can make it easier to see the bounds of your comp. Both the transparency grid and panel background customizations might not seem like that big of a deal, but it's an indicator to me that the After Effects team is doing their best to allow users to customize the app as much as possible. These two new features, plus the new appearance controls for the UI, are steps in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. In addition to these customizations, I would love to see complete control over things like font size and colors for the UI, and even UI scaling options. Of course, Adobe's not gonna know that these features are important to me unless I actually submit a feature request. And there's a very simple guide written by senior quality engineer at Adobe and my personal friend, John Colombo, that I've linked to down in the description. No, Adobe has not asked me to do this. They don't know I'm making this video. I just truly believe this is the best way to get in touch with the After Effects team. If you want your feature request seen by the After Effects team, this is the way to make that happen. So follow the instructions and make your feature request. And if you want, share the link to your request in the comments and I'll go read them. If it's something that I agree with, I'll give it an upvote. And I might even put some of my favorite feature requests together in a future video to bring some more attention to them and to the After Effects team. And one final thing on that topic, rewrite After Effects from the ground up is not a feature request. Another new beta feature comes to the 3D side of After Effects, where if you have a model selected, properties for that model will show up in the properties panel, which is something I'm all for. I love using the properties panel to make quick adjustments instead of having to dig through the layer down in the timeline. And what we're able to change in the properties panel are shadow and light options, as well as being able to choose an animation track if your model has embedded 3D animation. And if all of this sounds new to you, go check out my last video where I cover the advanced 3D render engine in much more detail, and this will make a lot more sense. Quick Set Anchor is another new beta feature I'm really excited about. It's available in the Properties panel right here, as well as through the keyboard shortcut Shift plus Tab and pops up a familiar looking interface. With any layer selected, choose one of the nine options to instantly update the layer's anchor points. It works just as well as you'd expect. But if your layer has a position keyframe, updating the anchor point will add a new position keyframe. I don't really like that and would rather see it work the same way the Motion 4 Anchor Point tool does, where the position property is offset by the amount the anchor point moves, regardless of how many keyframes there are. That way it preserves the same motion and just relocates the anchor point. And that's exactly the kind of thing that the After Effects team wants to hear and why a dedicated thread was started for discussion around this feature. I link to that in the description as well. I really like seeing that the After Effects team is willing to make a feature that behaves similar to FX Console, where a quick keyboard shortcut can open up a panel wherever your cursor is that allows you to quickly make a useful adjustment. That's the kind of change that can make a huge improvement to everyday workflows. That's it for this batch of updates. Make sure you give them a try and let me know what you think of them down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.